The DJI Mavic 3, this drone has taken the world by storm, but did you know that there are several different versions of this drone, including one that has thermal? We're gonna talk all about it, don't go anywhere. Hey everybody, David here from Aerial Influence. Thank you so much for stopping by. Today we are talking about the DJI Mavic 3. This is one of the best drones going. Uh, it's the flagship for DJI right now. Incredible drone, people are loving it around the world. But there are several versions of this drone, both consumer versions and enterprise versions. So I wanted to talk about this. I wanted to kind of go through each drone, talk about the pluses and minuses of each, and talk about maybe what drone might be right for you. Are you trying to start a small business? Are you trying to take beautiful videos or beautiful photography? There's a different drone for each purpose, and we're going to walk through it. But first, let's talk about the similarities of all of the DJI Mavic 3 drones. First is the flight time. They all get four. 46 minutes of flight time. Now in real world scenario, you're probably getting closer uh, to like 38 minutes, but they all share that flight time. So from the consumer versions all the way up to the enterprise versions, they all get a reported 46 minutes. Speaking of flight time, let's talk about batteries. They all take the same battery. The consumer versions and the enterprise versions, there is no difference. In the past, there were different batteries for the enterprise drones. They were self-heating. Uh, that is not the case with the Mavic 3 drones. They all take the same batteries. Also want to talk about how compact these drones are. I mean, watch this. We're going to take it all the way down to its smallest form. Boom, boom. And there you have uh, the drone all folded up. Let me get it a little closer, see if we can focus in on that. There we go. So the drone's all folded up now. That's as small as it gets. Uh, and when you put the props out, that's as large as it gets. So you can see this is an incredibly compact drone that fits in a little waterproof case, can fit in a backpack, can fit in the back of a squad car, can fit in the back of your work truck. Uh, so really, really great to the fact that this drone is incredibly compact. Also want to talk about max flight distance. Now they say the Mavic series, the Mavic 3 series, uh, can go nine miles. So that video transmission can go nine miles. That's way too far. You will never be able to test that. Um, reality is, you know, once you go past a mile, you're not gonna be able to keep the drone in your line of sight anyway. Uh, so it has a great connection with the drone and the remote. That video signal is very, very strong. And you might be able to get several miles out of it, but you don't wanna try it because that would be illegal. Next, let's talk about obstacle avoidance. These drones have sensors. They got them on the top. You got them on the front, you got them on the back, you got them on the bottom. 360 degrees, this thing is protected with obstacle avoidance sensors. Now, like we always say, don't count on them. Uh, use them very sparingly. Don't try to fly close to a building. Don't try to fly close to a tree. Use your common sense, but just know that as a backup, it's kind of like your seatbelt. Uh, you've got it there just in case you need it. Last similarity I want to talk about is the deployability. Now this drone is very quickly deployed. Uh, you can do it in under a minute, so that's out of the box onto the ground, get the remote going, get the drone going, have them link up and up in the air in less than a minute. So this drone is great for deployability, all of these drones. So the whole Mavic series, Mavic 3 series is great for deployability. Okay, we're gonna start off with the consumer drones. Let's start with the Mavic 3 Classic. Now this drone is kind of the base model of the Mavic 3 series that you can get right now. It's gonna be the cheapest. I'm gonna put the prices up as we go along. I'll put the prices up on the bottom of the screen for each one. Uh, but the Mavic 3 Classic is kind of the base model. This is what you want to get if you really want a Mavic 3, but you don't want to spend the money for the standard version. So this is the classic version. You get the Hasselblad Micro Four Thirds sensor on this drone. That is an incredible sensor. You're going to be able to get depth of field with your subjects. You're going to get separation uh, from your background. This drone really is incredible and that Micro Four Thirds sensor is fantastic. It's a great deal that you're able to get it at this price. Uh, on a drone like the Mavic 3 Classic. So yeah, fantastic drone. This is definitely entry level in the Mavic 3 series. So maybe you had like a Air 2S or something like that and you're wanting to graduate. This is the next logical step for you. It also has a four times digital zoom on it. So it is gonna start to degrade the image as it zooms in. And the consumer versions of this drone also include like master shots and quick shots. So say you wanna do an orbit or you're wanting to do like that rocket shot or do subject tracking or something along those lines. That's all included with these consumer drones. And that is not really included 
included with the enterprise drones. So that's a big plus for the consumer drones. If that's something you're looking for, if you want all those smart, fun features, uh, you're gonna wanna buy the consumer version. All right, we also wanna talk about mapping with the consumer versions as well with this micro four thirds sensor. It has an electronic shutter. Now an electronic shutter is gonna cause some problems when you're doing mapping because you're gonna get sort of blurriness in your images and that can affect your map obviously in a negative way. What you really want is a mechanical shutter. We're gonna have a solution for that in one of the drones coming up. Uh, but this drone, the consumer drones, they all have electronic shutter. So they're not really ideal for mapping. Like I said, they will make maps. They will make maps that look really, really good, uh, but they're not necessarily gonna be accurate and there may be some blurriness in some of your photos. Should also mention that that Hasselblad camera, which goes along this entire consumer line of the Mavic 3 is 5.1K and it's 20 megapixels. So you're getting really, really excellent footage out of this, really excellent photos out of this. Now, once you move up to the standard version, you do get a 28 times hybrid zoom on it. So 28 times, when you get that high up in your zoom range, you could almost use the Mavic 3 standard uh, for like inspection works, for roof inspections, crop count inspections. There are all sorts of things you could do with a drone that can zoom in 28 times. Now again, as you zoom in further, it's gonna degrade the image a little bit. It's gonna make it look a little bit worse. But again, for something like framing, if you really need to get in and zoom in and see something from a long distance away, that 28 times hybrid zoom is pretty fantastic. Now there's one other consumer version that is the Cine version. Uh, so this is really for cinematic stuff. You're trying to shoot really, really high quality video. It's got an SSD drive built in and it can record in like Apple ProRes or other formats that are gonna make it easier for you to edit with uh, once you've shot all of your footage. So really that is the big jump in price. I think that's around $5,000 for the Cine version. Uh, and really you should only buy that if you you've got work coming up. Uh, you don't want to just buy that for fun because you don't want it to become a paperweight. You don't want it just sitting in your closet waiting for somebody to call you magically to do a job. You want to have something lined up. Uh, you want to have a reason to use a drone that you're going to spend five grand on. Uh, so if you're a filmmaker and you know you're going to use it, the Cine version might just be for you. So again, who are these drones actually made for the consumer versions? Well, you want to look at like content creators. You want to look at cinematographers. You want to look at photographers. You want to look at the real estate industry. Industry, there are countless ways to use a consumer drone and you can actually use it to make money as well. Like I said, you don't just have to use enterprise drones uh, for professional work. Many of the consumer drones are high enough quality to use them for professional work. All right, now let's talk about the enterprise series. Now the things that come with all the enterprise drones, you're going to get hard cases with all of them. Uh, if you get the battery kit, you're going to end up with four batteries all together and a multi-charger. They all also have some attachments. So one is a loudspeaker. Now you can imagine for like search and rescue, uh, that could be an important one. If they wanna communicate with somebody that's in distress, they're able to do that with this loudspeaker and it is very loud. There's also a third party spotlight that is coming out. We should be getting one hopefully very, very soon, uh, but we have high hopes. We've seen a demo of it and it is very bright and it actually articulates with the camera. So uh, that's gonna be very, very cool as well. And then there's also the RTK top hat. So if you're doing mapping, this RTK top hat is very important. RTK stands for real-time kinematic I suggest you look it up, but a lot of farmers use it for their self-driving tractors. It's basically GPS on steroids, but if you're doing mapping, this is something you want to look into. You'd have to log into an N-Trip network, which is basically like RTK that's broadcast, or you would have to buy like the DJI RTK2 base station, uh, which would also connect and then give you that centimeter level accuracy and that stability on all of your flights. So those are the things that the Mavic 3 Enterprise Series they have in common. Now let's talk about what each drone drone brings to the table. So the Mavic 3 Enterprise has that micro four thirds sensor on it and it is a mechanical shutter, a mechanical shutter. So that's fantastic because you're going to get those great maps, those high resolution maps. You're not going to have to worry about any motion blur in your pictures. Uh, they really are going to be pristine photos that stitch together really, really well. And if you've got the RTK on it, it's going to be super, super accurate. It also has a 56 times hybrid zoom on it. So talk about getting in there without having to get close to something. A 56 times hybrid zoom is fantastic. Again, as you zoom further and further in, it's gonna degrade the image a little bit, uh, but still fantastic that it can go 56 times in. So really the Mavic 3 Enterprise is for mapping. It's also could be used for inspection as well because of that big zoom range, uh, but mapping is really the bread and butter. This drone actually replaces the Phantom 4 RTK, which was a really popular drone with mappers. Now this Mavic 3 Enterprise is really taking its 
place and has really taken it to the next level. Next up is the Mavic 3 Thermal. I've got that one right here. Uh, you can see it's got different cameras on it. It's got a zoom camera on it. It's got a regular RGB camera on it. Not, not the Micro Four Thirds, just a, it's like a half inch sensor, I believe, on this one. And then it's also got a thermal sensor on it. So high resolution, 640 by 512 thermal resolution on a drone for $6,000, that's incredible. That is, you know, years ago, just to get a thermal sensor in general, it would have cost you $10,000. So to see this and to have it on a drone that's this compact and is this easy to take around with you uh, is really something fantastic and DJI has really, really outdone themselves. For search and rescue, a drone like this with that high resolution thermal really, really does make a huge difference and is absolutely saving lives around the country as we speak. All right, finally, let's talk about the newest drone in the Mavic 3 series, the Mavic 3 Multispectral. Now this drone is used mostly in the agricultural world. It does come with that micro four thirds sensor on it. It's got a mechanical shutter, so still gonna be great for RGB mapping, but it also has four additional cameras on it, four sensors. Those sensors are picking up light that we can't actually see. So you're talking about green, red, red edge, and near infrared. That's what it's picking up that we can't actually see. What do those colors mean to us? nothing. They mean absolutely nothing to us, but they are going to mean something to a crop analyst. So you can fly this drone over your field and the different colors are going to mean different things. So green might mean that you don't have enough water in this area. Red might mean that you don't have enough fertilizer in this area. So your crop analyst is going to be able to read that and tell you how to fix it before it becomes a problem that can be seen with the visible eye. So again, this version of the Mavic 3 is replacing the Phantom 4 Multispectral, another really, really popular drone in the agriculture world. But this one is improving upon that. And we think this is only gonna push things further when it comes to drones in the agricultural world. All right, that is it for me. We hope you enjoyed this video. We worked pretty hard on them, so please hit like and subscribe if you did. But we wanted to just sort of clarify things and let you know what each of these Mavics bring to the table. Each one can be used for a different purpose. And you really wanna research and think about which one is right for you because the last thing you want to do is go out and buy like the thermal version of the drone and then a month into it realize oh i don't really have a need for thermal um, so you don't want to do that so make sure that you are researching watch videos like the ones we put on our channel watch other videos like there are tons of them out there on the enterprise series as well so make sure you check those out and do your research we appreciate you stopping by we'll see you next time